Um, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to create a shopping cart uh, with HTML and uh, plain JavaScript. So I've already gone ahead and uh, initialized the project. This is just your basic HTML. And then there's one uh, dev tag where our products will be. And then there's a script tag, which is referencing main.js right here. Well, they're all blank. So I'm going to go through with you guys on how to create a cart. So let's dive in. So as you can see, I've just created one div tag with the items. I'm going to initialize everything from the JavaScript because in most cases you'd have your data coming in from your back end and you push it into the front uh, to the front end so that your users can see. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say let um, rather let's call it products. Make it to uh, that'll be an array of objects, which is going to have a name, an image, and the price of the, of the items. I'm just going to replicate that once. So here I'm going to have it as Apple. Image will be apple.jpg. And here I'm going to have tomato. Tomato. Oh, tomato.jpg. Mm, price. I'm just going to put 12 there and 34 there. Um, let's leave this as integers and not string so that we can run calculations on them later on. So I'm going to create a function here that's going to load the data into the HTML. So I'm just going to call it load. Uh, so use the Python. Uh, so load. Then we're going to create the item. So let's um, items is equal to document dot create element uh, and the element I want is a div tag so this is just basic uh, JavaScript if you are not familiar with most of these terminologies that I'm using please refer to I would recommend that you learn some JavaScript before doing this so we have created our HTML uh, we have created the element and now let's load that element with data. So items, rather item, because it's going to be one of them. Item is equal to, uh, rather item dot inner HTML is equal to. I'm using back text here because I want to create a multi-line string. So back text, that button is usually uh, on your keyboard, uh, just next to one to your left. So. I'm going to create a div here of class products or the product because it's a singular item. Let's just close that tag down there. And then in there we can create the image with the source of um yeah i'm just gonna leave that blank for now and then uh, let's use the p tag with the with the class of name i'm gonna leave that blank as well and then another p tag with the class of price now we're going to use this to load all the items into the HTML so dynamically JavaScript is going to load them right here in this space okay so for them to load we're gonna load them from the array that we have up here right so to make it easy we don't have to call this function over and over again with different parameters we can just 
create a loop right inside here to do that for us. So I'm gonna call products. Uh, the for each loop uh, is gonna loop through each individual item in our array, and the f for each loop uh, gives us the actual item, and we can also find the index of the item, right? So which is gonna help us in here to say images slash and dollar sign to call the item, which is i dot image and in here dollar sign i dot name same thing here dollar sign i dot price so so far our uh, items have been loaded uh, but they still won't show up in our HTML because we haven't called the data just uh, we haven't added them to our page just yet so we're gonna call this item right here um, this div right here so document dot get element by ID of item I'm just going to declare that as a variable, so I'm going to say const uh, items is equal to, and then items dot append, because now we're appending to that HTML, so we're going to append item. So let's save that, and let's make sure we call this function load so that it actually runs. So if we go into our browser, you see that that data has been loaded right here. Uh, in case you're wondering where the images are coming from, I have a folder here called images with the apple and the tomato. So that's why I had to call slash images, uh, images slash and then the name of the image, All right? So this, this entire thing is looping through these two items that I have here and then up, uh, adding them using this append keyword to our to our HTML. And now we can view them right here. And one more thing we can add is a button, right? Uh, of class equals add. And then let's close that button. And add to cart. And as you can see here, this is just basic HTML. So when it when we append it to the item, it adds it one by one. Why we're not saying uh, item something like item dot inner HTML or the items in HTML? It's because every time we add it, it's it's going to replace. So append kind of just adds up onto what already exists, right? So even if we can go to our console here, or rather our element here, and we check the items that we have, you see that there are two items, right? Which were dynamically injected by JavaScript. So class art add. Now, one more thing that we need to do is um, item dot get elements by class name add and then here we're gonna call the uh, element zero dot add event listener I'll explain this in a bit. I'm just going to type it out so that we can see what we're doing. And then... And I'm using the ES6 convention for creating a function right here. I would have gone uh, function 
and then remove this and then that's just the same thing but I'm using the 86 convention and then from there what the event listener will be is add to cart so it'll be a function and it would be adding the index this index right here so let me go ahead and just create that function which will be add to cart so I'm just going to copy that, paste it right there, and then the index as the parameter. And I'm just going to leave that as blank for now. we get into that later. Excuse me. So now why I'm calling item, it's because of this item that we're adding to the HTML. And I'm using get elements by uh, class name instead of get element by ID because for some reason uh, ID doesn't work because it's not initialized by the time that uh, this this data has been added. So I'm using get elements by class name add so that I can actually grab the item. And to see if this thing is working, I'm just gonna console log here. Console log. Um, let's just print the index. Right. And let's go straight to our HTML, go into the console, and if we click add, you see zero there, and if we click add, it's one, meaning that our buttons are working. So we can click on the buttons, and they'll show up exactly as they should. So we're going to be using this index to actually add the items to the cart that we're going to be creating. So far, we haven't created the cart just yet. We just added the items to the to the HTML and so that the user can actually interact with the items. And then from there, we're going to add them to the cart. Now, there are several ways of which you can add the items to the cart. Uh, you can use your back end maybe post them to your database and then the user has to fetch them from the database every time they want to see them which is actually a safe way because you don't want your user to actually manipulate the data when you're sending like when they're buying they might manipulate the price and whatnot but yeah in this lesson i'm just going to show it uh by saving it to the local storage in your browser right so our data is going to show up in um, right here application uh, local storage so right now there is nothing or rather there is there's actually something uh i think this was saved when i was testing yeah let's just refresh that yeah so there's nothing and so we're going to go straight to our console and uh, rather we're going to go straight to our script and have the items added to the cart. So we're going to say uh, local storage dot set item. Um, going to call it cart. Uh, for those of you who don't know what local storage is, it's just a storage in your browser. So it stores it locally in the browser. It's not accessible anywhere else but the browser and it's specific to the site that you're accessing. So if you create another project, it's not going to be accessing the, the same local storage. It's only specific to that site. That's why here you're seeing that it's referencing the same address as the one that I have up here. And to add an item to the local storage and you use the keyword set item, and then the key of which you want to reference that item by, and then the actual data. And the data is always a string, right? So from here, uh, rather, let me not store the local storage. I'm just going to store the entire, yeah, uh, the index should do. I'll just reference the index, which should save us time. And then from there, I'm just going to, Store the, the index. Yeah, that should work. Rather, let's actually make sure that it's actually a string. So, just parsing it there. And once the item is added, I'm just going to pop up an alert that's going to. Say, uh, 
let's do that. So it's going to be a uh, product dot name, or uh, rather products at the index of the of the item that we've passed in, and then from there dot name, and then just a message to say added to the cart. Or rather, I made a mistake here. I'm not supposed to pass it in like that because it's going to overwrite every time. So I'm going to create a, an array right here. Is it good to, rather, I'm going to create it outside. That's something I forgot. Sorry about that. So let cart. And then just, just leave it blank. That should be fine. Oh, why do I keep messing up today? I'm not coding properly. Okay, so cart dot push push, and then we're gonna push in the index, right? So our cart is gonna have that index, and then from there, I'm gonna say uh, index rather, because now we need to parse this entire array as a string, right? So we're gonna say JSON dot stringify, which should turn our array into a string, and then pass it in there. So this should work. Let's test it out. Let's click on Add to Cart. Apple added to Cart. Okay, and as you can see here, that it's been added. If we click on Add to Cart on the tomato, tomato added to Cart, and if we click OK. As you can see here, we have 0 and 1, which are our indexes for what we're doing so far, for our products, rather. So yeah, so far our items have been added to cart. Now in the next video, I'm going to be showing those items in the cart, and I'm going to add a little bit of CSS just to um, show this in a proper fashion, and also yeah, uh, how to show the total price of the items and how to remove the items from the cart as well. So, yeah, thanks for watching.